Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Thomas Van Campen once again. Um, I'm sorry that I'm releasing this one a little bit late. Uh, I could have released this one earlier in the day, but the absolute truth is, earlier today I was trying to head to my animation school to um, put together um, the cartoon I was working on last episode, that cowboy cartoon. I was hoping to get the proper equipment so I could put that together and edit it properly and all that stuff. But as fate would have it, my school was closed today, and I didn't have the foresight to do a simple Google search to find out whether or not it'd be open. So I made that big trip for nothing, basically. But uh, I finished that one off camera, and now I'm uh, going back to the good old samurai duel. Uh, I jumped ahead a bit for this one as well. They all, they all, Both these MRIs have their keyframes. They both have their basic anatomy. Now I'm throwing in the robes and the hair, as you can uh, see uh, on the screen. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to illustrate that blowing in the wind. I think this will look really good by the end of it. Uh, I was kind of uncertain because uh, I thought the anatomy would m might be a bit too weird. And uh, for those of you wondering, I did fix the anatomy off screen too. So now the head uh, size is as consistent as I can get it. Uh, so yeah, I was kind of worried about this one, but I think this one's going to be okay by the end of it. And I think it's going to end up looking really good. Uh, I'll probably post the end results um, uh, both in my demo reel and in just by itself. So yeah, that's basically it in terms of what I'm doing here. Um, recently, I know I know this movie is a couple years old, uh, and you can get it at a bargain bin for like ten dollars now. But on it, but you know, because of animation and how much time needs to go into it, I barely like uh, watch movies or play video games anymore. Um, but yesterday, I watched Django Unchained. That is a friggin' good movie, man. La Quentin Tarantino friggin' does it again. Um, I don't think Quentin Tarantino has a bad movie in his track record so far. Um, I, I don't think Hateful Eight did uh, that well re uh, in the box office, and I don't think that's because of the quality of the film itself. I mean, I read reviews and watched reviews of it, and people seem to like it just fine. Uh, I think it just came out at an unfortunate time, and that unfortunate time is around the same time as Star Wars The Force Awakens, so it had pretty stiff competition when it came out. But, you know, it's another Tarantino film, How Can You Go Wrong? Um, and something interesting that I heard Quentin Tarantino say in a interview I once watched of him is he said after he's making, after he makes his 10 movie, 10th movie, bleh, sorry, can't talk, after he's made his 10th movie, he's going to retire, um, and I don't know how much I can believe him on that, I wouldn't be surprised if he kept making films after that, and that's just what he's saying for the time being, but um, the reason why he said that was because he said, in his own words, there's nothing worse than a director that's out of touch, um, and he just wants to, like, kind of put an end to his career before he's Stop, he stops getting a sense of uh, uh, what's uh, a popular uh, in the now. But you know what? I honestly don't think uh, Quentin Tarantino will stop being relevant anytime soon. I mean, his films have always been cool. Always. Um, and that's probably because he doesn't pander too much to uh, his time frame. You know what I mean? Like... It would have been so easy for him to, in the 90s, to make Pulp Fiction about, uh, just have a soundtrack that's entirely, um, what's popular at the time, like 90s stuff. But he doesn't do that. Uh, he puts on classics in his, uh, soundtracks, and he always puts in super fitting music. Uh, his soundtracks are always a major influence in his movies, and they end up being, uh, honestly, some of the best parts. And... He makes movies that no matter what time you watch them, they're always cool. It doesn't matter what's in or what's out. They're just always neat. He can make a Western in the late 2000s and it'll kick so much ass uh, because he puts his own spin on it, you know? It's 
got aspects of a classic western obviously because quentin tarantino in his own words takes a lot from um uh, all the movies that he's seen and he uh, recycles a whole bunch of classic movie tropes but he also puts his own spin on it and he makes a, a really unique western story that's not necessarily historically accurate uh but it uh ends up being kind of this new fresh thing with a unique uh protagonist who's uh black escapes from slavery it's a triumphant story about um um evildoers getting their comeuppance like any good western it's about um a man a seeking and achieving freedom with his wife always a classic story and that ending is so satisfying man uh it's a pretty long movie too i should mention that it's like two minutes and 40 or it's two minutes what am i talking about uh two hours is what i meant to say two hours and 45 minutes and um it's it uh, when I saw that I thought maybe it would drag on a little bit because a lot of westerns when they're that long or maybe even a bit shorter they do point is westerns tend to drag a lot just because that's the way their pacing works they let uh, a lot of cinematography soak in and stuff like that and they really build up suspense that's how a western works and I thought uh, I was going to get in for a lot of that. But in spite of its length, it's uh, ironically one of the faster paced Westerns I've ever seen. Um, and it has like an all out gang war uh, near the end. Oh, I probably shouldn't have spoiled that. You know what? The movie is a couple years old and nobody's watching this anyway. Who cares? Um, but yeah, I-, I thought because of its length, it would drag a little bit. But it keeps you hooked from beginning to end. It immediately catches your attention with this awesome opening where it plays that classic Western tune and uh, it gets right into the nitty gritty and it's quite gruesome at parts. Like I know it's Quentin Tarantino. You have to expect some gruesomeness because uh, any Tarantino movie that doesn't have that uh, is just weird. But um, yeah, it's... It, it gets gruesome not in a typical Tarantino way where it's just gory or in fact a lot of like the really uh, violent stuff or the really violent implied stuff kind of happens off camera um, but you hear the sound effects and the sound effects like blast right in your ear um, and just the implications of what's happening is the most teeth cringing part. I think that's a sign of a good director when you don't necessarily have to show how gruesome whatever you're presenting is ha- happening. What matters is that um, is that um, you kind of build on how terrible it is. And a lot of people kind of discredit Quentin Tarantino as just being an uber-violent director who glorifies violence, and that's the only reason for his appeal. The thing about Tarantino is he can use violence in a variety of ways, which not many directors can do. He can use violence for um, uh, humorous purposes. He can make really funny violent scenes like uh, in Inglorious Bastards where they shoot up Hitler. Also not historically accurate, by the way. Um, He can use it for really like horrific scenes like uh, a few of the scenes in Django. Um, in fact, most of the scenes in Django, really. And, um, he can make it really sad, too, like the ending of Reservoir Dogs, uh, where everybody shoots each other out, there's blood everywhere, and you see, like, uh, Mr. White trying to calm Mr. Orange down, it's, like, really sentimental stuff. So, yeah, he does have a lot of violence, but it's not like a one-trick pony. He uses violence for multiple purposes, And violence can be used for multiple purposes and should be used because, you know, um, violence is like any other factor in a movie where um, a good artist knows how to use it to its full potential in any given circumstance. Uh, It can they can illustrate how it's a good thing. They can illustrate how it's a bad thing. They can illustrate sadness through violence. They can illustrate humor through violence. And a lot of the kind of weaker directors, they only ever use factors like violence whenever they try to get one idea across. So, yeah. 
uh it and it even though it's a very much a modern uh western like it does it, it has its pacing that's not really within the norm of like say the good the bad and the ugly or pretty much any clint eastwood film um it doesn't have that same slow pacing it's actually quite uh quick but um it has a lot of tropes like that classic western font in the beginning credits it uh has a bunch of um kind of a seri- um kind of a tv serial uh opening theme songs and stuff like that and um yeah it's kind of it it's kind of like that where even though its pacing is a, is quite different and its subject matter is a lot different it's still a classic western through and through um there's a really funny scene in that uh, about the early KKK, uh, about the about the entire mob complaining about how they can't see anything in their uh, white masks. That's really funny, and that showcases another talent that Quentin Tarantino has: is how he can change your perception on any given subject, no matter what your initial instinct is. For instance, he can humanize the friggin' KKK. That is, uh, that, that's the sign of a talented artist, somebody who can change your perception on something. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it for Django. Um, I really, I haven't been to the movie theater in a while. Last time I was at the theater, it was for Star Wars The Force Awakens for, uh, with, with a bunch of friends, and that was awesome, but, um, Another movie I really want to see, but it unfortunately isn't playing in very much locations. Maybe I've just been living out on a rock and, like, it's coming to DVD soon or something like that. Um, I probably sound really stupid by saying that. Anyway, regardless, I really want to see uh, Hail Caesar. That looks really interesting. It's the new Coen Brothers movie. And I like the Coen Brothers. Um... They're very much like Quentin Tarantino and that they're really good with dialogue uh, and the, and oftentimes the dialogue is the major centerpiece of their movies. Uh, and they made The Big Lebowski, which is the, the friggin' funniest. It's one of the funniest movies I've ever seen. Um, I have a hard time picking between whether my favorite comedy is... The Big Lebowski or Woody Allen's Take the Money and Run because they both really appeal to me. But yeah, The Big Lebowski is really good, has some uh, funny characters, especially Walter. Walter gets all sorts of good lines in there. Um, it's very quotable. It's um, it's a good show. It's a good show. So yeah. Um, that's pretty much what I've been doing. Also, been playing some video games. Uh, I've been playing things like Team Fortress 2. And I haven't played a video game in forever, man. Like, uh, I pretty much spent the entirety of a year animating this bird fly solo. And I did almost nothing else within that span of time. But yeah, I've been playing some Smite. Been playing some Team Fortress 2. Those are always fun. Um... Yeah, maybe I'll save that conversation for the next episode. In the meantime, thank you guys for joining me once again. Um, I, I I hope I can release these sooner than later. I'll, like I said, I'll try to keep up with these as much as I can. And I'll see you all for the next video. Okay, see you later.